Hey folks, my name is Shay Parker and this is RTFM, the show where I teach you how to play a game, or sometimes how to expand that game to fit your playstyle, which is what I'm doing today with Barrage. This water-based rage generator is all about producing hydroelectric dams in service of the almighty victory point. But the base game is only the first level. There's also a full expansion called the Lee Water Project and a way to use automated players to fill out a game or play it solo. Now before we start, I need to mention that I occasionally make mistakes. Blame this accursed human fallibility. But in case one makes it into this video, I post corrections using the Klingon subtitles channel. So please turn that on or check the description box below. With that said, there's a lot of great stuff to cover, so I'm jumping right into the deep end with the Lee Water Project. I'm doing the expansion first because the solo mode works with Lee Water, so knowing this first is useful if you want to learn both of them. Anyway, this box adds some more of the stuff you already know, like bonus tiles, advanced technologies, and executive officers. There's a fifth player board for the Netherlands faction, along with some orange player pieces, though you can't use these to make it a five player game unless you have the five player expansion. I'm not teaching that in this video, if you have it, it's easy to learn. And lastly, this game introduces two new elements external works, and private buildings. Respectively, these let you spend your machines for powerful bonuses and construct buildings that each have unique abilities based on their associated tile. When setting up the game, add all of the familiar components to the various pools before drawing them out. The expansion requires that you use the advanced rules, which basically just means you need to play with the patent office. You'll also set up the extra actions board with these external work tiles in their respective spaces and one drawn out for each as well as five randomly selected private buildings, and players get a board extension that you'll fill with your private building pieces. And if you're playing with fewer than four players, cover up the appropriate spaces with unused buildings. Let's look at external works first. This board has three work tiles that each provide ways for you to spend machines for a benefit, but unlike the construction action, when you spend a machine here, they are returned to the supply and you won't get them back. In my experience with Barrage, I've never felt like I had a particular excess of machinery to work with, but the rewards are powerful. Let's say we take this action. So we send over some workers, and sure, we'll have to lose an excavator and a concrete mixer, but we get two bucks, and we place a powerhouse for free. Or for three bucks, if it's a red space. As with the advanced tech tiles, these will not automatically refresh, and at the end of the round, you'll discard any leftover and draw three new ones. So, that was nice and easy. Let's look at the buildings next. Each player gets this skinny little board extension with a few private buildings they can construct. You've got a new tech tile, so constructing these buildings requires the same action as your other structures, with the caveat that they won't provide any income like structures do. The cost for each building is determined by what kind of building you want it to be, however, and for that, we need to go over to the private buildings board. There are five buildings out here, and each has their own cost and associated action. Once you've paid the cost and built the building, you'll place it on one of these building spaces, and now you've activated that building tile for yourself, meaning that you can send workers here for this special action. At the end of the round, the workers you've sent here will come back, but the buildings won't, so this tile is activated for you for the rest of the game. You can only attach one building to each tile, and you can only take its associated action once per round. But for each tile you activate, at the end of the game, you'll score the points on the bottom left of the tile. And that's all you need to know for the Lee Water expansion. All in all, it's a pretty easy expansion to add to your game, though it does have a significant impact on strategy. Now the solo mode is a bit more complex, so let's take a look at that next. Okay, so I've been calling it a solo mode this whole time, but that's not entirely accurate. What this module provides is an automated player system that you can use to replace one to three human players. So it can be solo or added to a multiplayer game. Your choice. So a few things to know right off the bat. This mode works with the Lee Water expansion, but doesn't require it. So whenever you see something that uses an expansion mechanic, if you aren't playing with Lee Water, you just skip it. This mode does require you to use the advanced rules, however. So the patent office is in play, and you don't have the wild tech tiles. And lastly, you can adjust the difficulty of the automated players, and there are instructions on how to do that in the back of the rulebook, but I'm just going to be teaching the medium difficulty rules because those are standard. Setup follows most of the normal rules, with human players choosing companies first and randomly assigning the remaining companies to the Atomas. They won't have starting contracts or executive officers, unless you're playing the very hard difficulty. They will, however, begin the game in the highest positions of the turn order track, and they'll start the game with 16 victory points. And lastly, they'll have a stack of Automa tiles with this side face up. 
These tiles will determine their actions every turn, and they're what I'll be spending the bulk of this video teaching. But first, while the Automa players act the same as human players in most respects, there are a few key differences. First off, they don't believe in money. Instead, they barter in points. So whenever they would gain or spend credits, they'll move their point tracker forward or back respectively, and they can go into the negatives. Second, they never take contract tiles. Doesn't mean they can't fulfill them, but as you'll see, they complete contracts while they're still in the market. Next, while the Atoma can buy advanced tech tiles, unless you're playing hard or very hard mode, they won't use the special ability associated with them, just the construction part. Also, after building powerhouses, the energy bonuses will apply, but not the company special ability. And at the end of the game, the Atoma will score five more points than what is printed on the objective tile for its position. And lastly, the Atoma use engineers a little differently. Those action tiles tell them what action they're taking and how many engineers they'll pay for it, regardless of what the action space calls for. On the management board, they'll take the highest available space on the left side if possible, or the highest on the right if not. These still block the actions for human players, even if they didn't completely fill it, but they don't necessarily determine what the Atoma player does. That's decided by the action tile. And if there are no more spaces left, but the Atoma could still take the action, you just place their engineers nearby. Similarly, for construction actions, engineers will fill spaces from left to right. This doesn't affect the action at all, and there's no limit to how many structures the Atoma can build in a round. And one more thing about engineers, if they have any left, the Atoma will take a turn. If the action they must perform requires more than they have left, they'll still take the action and just place their remaining workers on the space. Okay, that was a bit of an info dump, apologies, but it's important to know all that before starting, and I recommend looking over this section in the rulebook before your first game just to remind yourself of them. Anyway, let's get down to business. During the game, all phases work basically the same except for actions, and like I said, the Atoma's actions are determined by their AI tiles, so let's break these down. Each time the Atoma takes a turn, you'll flip over the top tile and place it to the right. The next tile on the stack will determine the actions, and the tile you just flipped will determine where buildings are placed and help break ties. The action side has three columns, which generally correspond to energy-based actions on the left, construction in the middle, and any other actions on the right. When determining what the Automa does, move from top to bottom, column by column, trying to find the first action that they're able to perform. Then for most actions, their turn will end. However, if the action they just performed has this blue outline, you'll keep going until you reach the next action they can do. And if nothing else, the last action is always possible. Starting with energy production, they'll take this action if the following three criteria are true. One, they're able to produce energy using the normal means. Two, they're either to the left of the current round section on the energy track or not in the lead on the energy track. Either of those fulfills the criteria. And three, the maximum energy they could make would fulfill a contract on display matching the color shown on the action tile. Here it would need to fulfill a green contract, so they'd only produce if it made more than three energy, including any modifiers they'd get. If all that is true, they'll produce using the best system they have, using all of the water in that dam. Then they'll fulfill the highest value contract on display and earn the rewards, taking the rightmost contract if tied. And this can be a national contract as well, if they qualify, of course. Next up, we've got water management. They'll only take this action if at least one drop they place can end up stored by one of their dams when it eventually flows. If a second drop wouldn't be collected by the Atoma, it won't be placed. If there are multiple options for where to put water, the letters on the criteria tile will break ties. So here A and C are eligible, and C is higher than A, so the drop goes to C. The next action to talk about is the contract office. This one's easy. They'll simply remove the indicated contracts from the office, refresh the display, and gain some energy for it. As a reminder, both water management and contract office actions have this blue box, so after taking one of these actions, you'll continue on to the next one, which is construction. Here the Atoma will build the indicated structure, provided it has the structure, the technology, and the machinery is available to do so. If it does, they'll build following normal rules and placing in a position determined mostly by the criteria tile. First off, if they have two of the three structures in a production system, i.e. dam, conduit, and powerhouse, and there's only one space where the structure they're placing would finish that system, then you'll place it there. If not, check the criteria for the matching structure from top to bottom until only one space remains. 
So here we'd want to build our dam in a red outlined space, then in a space linked to the most powerful conduit, with owned conduits being preferable, and lastly linked to an owned powerhouse. There's a whole page explaining each of these symbols, and they'll usually lead to a result by the third criteria. If it doesn't though, there's a number at the bottom, and this refers to a specific basin shown on this map on the back of the rulebook. Starting at that number and increasing in value, find the first space that matches all possible criteria, wrapping back to one if necessary, and place there. Now if you're playing with Lee Water, you might be asked to build a building, in which case it will choose the first available slot that it can afford, going from top to bottom or bottom to top, depending on the tile, and building there. The Automa will never use the ability from the building, but as soon as they activate one, the cheaper action space will no longer be available to human players. All right, we're almost done, just a couple quick ones left. The workshop action spins their construction wheel as you'd expect, but they'll only take this if there's something on their wheel to begin with. The machine shop will build them some machines, paying the cost in points, but it won't take this action on the fifth round. Similarly, at the second to last space, you might get this wild machine action. This also won't occur on the fifth round, but when they do take it, they'll buy whichever machine they have fewer of in their supply, or an excavator if tied. When going to the patent office, the Automa will pay two points to take a tile that builds the corresponding structure. They'll take the higher piece if tied, or skip the action if there are none available that satisfy it. Next up is the external works, which is a Lee Water action, and this lets the Automa complete a work if it has the machines for it, gaining the rewards as usual. If there are multiple options, rotate the action tile and look at the numbers for a tiebreaker. So here we take the tile in the second row. And lastly, there's the bank action, which will just earn the Automa a point and will always be doable if none of the other actions have triggered. And with that, you now know all you need to know to play Barrage with Automa players and the Lee Water expansion. I hope this helps get this game to the table for you, and did you know that my Patreon backers got to watch this video a whole month before everybody else? If you like the sound of that, or you just want to vote on which games I teach, head on over to the Patreon and consider becoming a rules lawyer. Either way, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!